most important aspects of a beautiful cello sound and a high level cello playing is a smooth bow change. And therefore, uh, we have to make sure that our joints, our wrist and our finger joints are completely flexible uh, in order to give enough room to the bow at the very moment of the change in both directions. In this context, I would like to talk to you a little bit about my wonderful professor um, with whom I had the honor and privilege to study in my hometown, Berlin, uh, Wolfgang Böttcher. Uh, Wolfgang was uh, for many years principal cellist of the Berlin Philharmonic and then decided to dedicate his career exclusively uh, to teaching and playing as a soloist. He was a wonderful human being with such a big heart uh, and lots of humor and, uh, and an incredible cellist, of course, with a beautiful sound. And he was talking a lot about bow change. And from him, I got this um, very nice exercise I would like to share with you today. When I think about Wolfgang Böttcher, I have, uh, of course, uh, many, many beautiful memories, but I can see in front of my eyes his, his bow hand especially, and his way of producing this very, very beautiful, warm and full sound. Um, and I, I, can, I can mainly see his fingers really sticking very, very well to the frog, with a, with a wonderful contact here. He was always trying to, to pass uh, to us this important message that we have to have a really good contact here in order to control our bow, yeah, with the fingertips as well as the joints here so that we can really feel the bow and the frog, the stick and everything. But of course, um, the arm and all the joints, the wrist, the finger joints, um, had to be really, really free and flexible. So nothing, nothing tight or stiff here. And this is somehow difficult, you know, to get as a result because you tend to press a little bit. If you're looking for a good contact here and with your thumbs as well, then um, somehow uh, it can happen that your whole arm gets a little bit stiff. Uh, so this is this uh, apparently uh, contrast, you know, between between a very very loose and and relaxed free arm and a good contact with your fingers. And I remember him talking a lot about this, and um, so he gave us this uh, very very nice exercise to practice. Uh, bow change at the frog, uh, which I would like to share with you today. So, in order to, to get a smooth and very legato bow change at the frog, we have to practice this uh, little exercise in three steps. For the first step, we play it and we use only the upper arm playing at the frog and with no finger motion at all. Our fingers are just holding the bow in a comfortable and nice way, you know, relaxed, but they don't act in any way. They just hold the bow, that's all. We are moving only our upper arm. train going forwards and backwards. Don't become stiff or tight. Just, you know, stay relaxed but use only your upper arm. you hear 
hear from time to time this little click. This is because um, I touch the silver here at the frog. And um, that's okay. You should also do this because it's important to use the bow really until the very last end of it. Not to, you know, only until here or so, but really go, go until the silver. So it doesn't matter if we have a little click from time to time. Important is the arm motion first. That's the first step. Now the second step is using only the fingers and no arm. This is not very, very comfortable feeling. It's, it's not very nice and also, of course, it doesn't sound very beautiful, but nevertheless, it's, it's an important step. And in order to not move the arm, you can, you know, stick it to the cello corpus here. Let's try. Only fingers and wrists. important that you don't stop your bow. Don't do stop here. Yeah, because we are working on a, a nice legato bow change. Yeah, so don't forget to continue the stroke all the time. Yeah. And each time try even a little more. so important because we have to train our fingers to become flexible to give to give room to take it back again you know this this motion is so important uh, later on when we play it's not really an active motion it's more or less only a reacting flexibility of your fingers because the arm is guiding of course and um, is giving the direction and the impulse but the fingers have to be flexible to react and therefore we have first we have to train them to, to get strong enough um, and flexible enough yeah so one last time I, uh, oh, I, I, I forgot to put my arm here yeah that's really awkward but it's a good exercise, yeah. Only wrist and fingers. And each time a little more bow, yeah. Don't do it for too long because you will you will notice, yeah, it's tiring. It's tiring in this in this part. <laughs> so um, uh, don't exaggerate. You should really do it for maybe one or two minutes. That's enough. And then the third step is to combine arm and fingers. Uh, to, to lead the motion with your arm, but to give room with your fingers. idea of um, eight lying on the floor <laughs> for you know the sign for endlessness in order to have this um, picture of an endless continuation of your arm motion there should not be a stop like this you know um, but it's it's going on the motion is going on even when you change your bow um, yeah, it never really stops. There, there are circles uh, yeah, in the continuation of your arm. This is a little bit difficult uh, to get. Um, maybe you can think of a, a, a ribbon, <laughs> uh, like, like, like this, you know, a long ribbon. And um, if you move your arm, you know, the ribbon follows. The motion 
of the arm is first and then the ribbon follows. So the same here. The arm comes first and then the fingers. Arm is changing direction first and then fingers follow. You can do as I do here, you know, grab your bow with both hands uh, in order to be able to, to guide your bow a little easier. And then you can just watch that. We, we are doing, let's say, a bow. And when we come close to the, the end of the bow, the last maybe 10 centimeters, um, our arm is already changing direction, but our fingers are still continuing up bow. Yeah, so here arm already wants to go down bow, but fingers are still in the up bow, and now only the fingers follow. Same here, arm changed direction already here, but fingers are still continuing. Can you see it? And only now. Yeah, first the arm then the fingers. Arm is already up bow, fingers still down bow. Arm changes direction here, finger only here. <laughs> this is really difficult to explain and to show, but maybe you got the idea. So everybody has to find its own solution for that. Um, but this exercise is perfect. And it's also quite nice, it, it doesn't become boring because of the harmony change. Yeah, it's always, you know, it's also a good idea to practice it maybe first for the left hand so you play in tune. Uh, very often, you know, students are watching the bow hand and, and you know, concentrating on, on all these aspects of the right hand and they play so, so out of tune that it's really bothering. So maybe before you start, you know, make sure you, you have the right intonation for your intervals. Okay, so after having done this exercise for some weeks of course it needs time you know there's no shortcut for this kind of motion you need to be patient and you need to work on it every day several times per day not too long five minutes in the morning five before lunch five in the evening and every day for a couple of weeks and then you will see <clears throat> uh, you will develop a beautiful smooth bow change in order to be able to play melodies that are really continuing uh, floating legato uh, without any stop like the Brahms second movement beginning that I played um, to start this tutorial I will play it once again to show to you the difference uh, of a good bow change and a bad one. So when we play you see, if I wouldn't I wouldn't be able to give room with my fingers it would sound like this moment of the bow <clears throat> as I said yeah maybe five till ten well maybe only five centimeters actually um, the very end 
there the fingers become so important you have to to give the last centimeters to give room to the arm to change direction without stopping the motion.